Hey, I bet you're wondering why I'm wearing, wearing these funny yellow pants. Well, today I'm power washing my house. It's a little dirty. Uh, I just started and uh, trying to figure out how long it's going to take me to do the whole job. So uh, I figure so far it's taken me about maybe with moving a ladder five minutes or so to do maybe an area of four square meters. So if the whole house is, I figure, about 120 square meters, uh, how long it's going to take. We're going to use proportions to figure it out. All right, outside power washing the house, and I had just started, more or less, and had uh, roughly estimated that it took me about five minutes to do four square meters. And then I was wondering if the whole thing, siding of the whole house was about 120 square meters, how long that was going to take me. Now, you can use what's called a proportion here, or proportional reasoning, uh, to figure out that unknown quantity. What you need for a proportion is you need two rates or two ratios, two fractions in general that you can compare. For this first uh, uh, comparison that I have, you can write a, a rate for that, right? It was I did about four square meters in five minutes. That's a rate because it's a comparison of two quantities that have different units. The second one, I can write a rate, except one of the things is going to be an unknown number, right? This uh, second thing is, I don't know how many minutes is it, this is here. This is my unknown, right? So we'll use mathematician's favorite variable here. We'll call it x. Right now, if I'm using a variable, I should write a, I should write what's called a let statement or somehow identify what that variable is going to be. I'm going to say let x equal time to power wash the entire house. All right. And now I'm going to move these things down here. We're going to we're going to make a comparison between those two things. A proportion is when you put these side by side and you put an equal sign in between them. So we'll line them up. And it might have been faster just to rewrite them, but that's okay. All right, so we put them side by side and we put an equal sign between them. Now the, the idea of proportionality is something that you have probably used a lot uh, before and maybe didn't even realize the word, but it's this statement saying those two things are equal and that if you can see that this is a certain times more, this is 30 times more. The area of the house is 30 times the area of the little bit that I had done and timed. So I, I, I didn't know the time for the entire house but I do know the time for this little piece here. And assuming that I'm going to kind of keep working at the same rate, this should be 30 times more. All right? That number 30, that's that's a, called a constant of proportionality. Now you can find that missing value by using that proportionality constant. All right? So if we want to know what x is, all we have to do is, is realize that if this has to be 30 times more, well, it's going to be that 5 minutes. It's going to take 30 times as long, which is going to mean that it's going to take 150 minutes. Or if you wanted to change that to 2.5 hours, 2.5 hours, you can do that. Now, let's get down here what a definition of a proportion before we go any further. Proportion is a statement of equality between two rates or ratios. Or ratios. In other words, between two fractions, right? We have we're saying that this fraction, that rate, is equal to this fraction. That's our statement of equality. We've got an equal sign in between. And you can use what I was calling the proportionality constant proportionality constant. In other words, that 30 in this case. Proportionality constant is the the, the number that multiplies this numerator to get this numerator, or this denominator 
to get this, denom this denominator to get this denominator. It's that common multiplier between the two rates or ratios. Okay, in a proportion. If something's constant, it's always the same. So this number is the same. It's the same multiplier in the top and the bottom. That's why it's called a proportionality constant. So to to kind of generalize this, if you have any any situation where you have a statement of equality between two two things, I'm just going to use variables there, a, b, c, and d. But as long as you can, as long as you have three of them you can figure out the fourth wherever it is right if this one's missing and you have the other three well you can you can figure out what what the proportionality constant is using the other pair the, the denominators right or if you're missing one of the ones in the denominator you can use the proportionality constant that you can figure out from the numerators all right sometimes proportions are you know the the values are is so uh, simple to work with we can do it in our head right if you had something like 6 over 10 and that was equal to some unknown over 40, we can we can look you know at the denominators here because we have both of them and say well that's times four so this has got to be times four right and then we can pretty clearly see that well x in this case has to be 24. But sometimes the numbers aren't so easy to work with and we'll have to probably resort to a calculator to to find missing values. So if you have something like seven over 12 and that's equal to I don't know 20 over X this is not so easy to see what this is right we can uh, we can uh, work with that uh, and use it to find this now this is going to be the proportionality constant here is going to be whatever 20 divided by 7 is right whatever 20 divided by 7 is there so I'm going to put some dotted lines over here whatever 20 divided by 7 is, that is our proportionality constant. So we can go to our calculator here. Well, actually, oops, there it was, 20 divided by 7. I'll write it down again. It's 2.857 and so on. I'm going to write down that it's roughly 2.857. Right, so this is roughly times 2.857. Oops, 857. And then uh, we know that this has to be roughly times 2.857. And we can figure it out, right? If we take that 12 and multiply it by. Now, instead of instead of doing that, what I what the better thing to do is instead of just doing 12 times 2.857, it's to to use that entire number there. So if I just put multiplied and multiply that by 12, it's going to give me this. It gives me lots of decimal places so I know I haven't lost anything any accuracy by rounding off before I'm done. 34.3 roughly if we want it to one decimal place. So then in this case x is now I'm going to put a roughly equal to sign this wavy equal sign 34.3 right and that's that that is that missing number there right it's same multiplier top and the bottom and that is uh, using proportions to find unknown quantities